from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the daily TV Mass. I'm Father Peter Turone. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from Morris Tremblay from Port Renfrew, British Columbia. This Mass is offered in memory of his wife who died in 2007 and for the members of his family and in appreciation for a lifetime of blessings and graces that have been given to them. On behalf of all the faithful across Canada and around the world gathered for this celebration, we thank Morris for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifests your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. The one who keeps the law makes many offerings. One who heeds the commandments makes an offering of well-being. The one who returns a kindness offers choice flower. And one who gives alms makes a thank offering. To keep from wickedness is, a pleasing, to, is pleasing to the Lord and to forsake unrighteousness is an atonement. Do not appear before the Lord empty-handed, for all that you offer is in fulfillment of the commandment. The offering of the righteous enriches the altar, and its pleasing odor rises before the Most High. The sacrifice of the righteous is acceptable, and it will never be forgotten. Be generous when you worship the Lord, and do not stint the first fruits of your hands. With every gift, show a cheerful face, and dedicate your taith with gladness. Give to the Most High as he has given to you, and as generously as you can afford. For the Lord is the one who repays, and he will repay you sevenfold. Do not offer him a bribe, for he will not accept it, and do not rely on a dishonest sacrifice. For the Lord is the judge, and with him there is no partiality. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading for the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Peter began to say to Jesus, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Lord, we have left everything and followed you. My brothers and sisters, Peter is asking this question to Jesus just after the Lord talked about how difficult it was for a rich person to enter into heaven. So Peter, in the back of his mind, is thinking, look, we left house and home, we left everything to follow you. So there's a great joy there and perhaps a bit of boasting as well. So he asked Jesus a question, a very important one. And the answer that he receives from the Lord is quite beautiful. He says, look, everything that you leave, you're going to get a hundredfold with persecutions. I remember when I had just finished my philosophy degree here at, uh, Tor in Toronto, and then I was getting ready to go to Italy. And it was that day that I was excited about and also dreading because I was at Pearson with my family and friends, and I had my niece and nephew that were still quite young, and we're all there, my family's crying, I'm trying to hold everything in together, and then just seeing them there, and then that, there was that final farewell. And I have to tell you, it was incredibly difficult, as it is for every man and woman who leaves house and home and their careers and everything to go and to serve God. There's an incredible joy in it, but we're also human beings, which means that we have natural affections. So when you have to kind of take a step back, it's not easy. And that's why I'm very grateful to St. Peter for asking Jesus that question, because he himself, right, and the others, they probably went through that experience as well, right? It's not recorded in the scriptures, but again, they're human beings. And it's a normal thing when you love someone to have to separate from them, even if only for a time. So I'd arrived in Italy, then I'd gone down to visit my cousins. So I was there for a few days, and then we had gone to mass. So this is the, actually the day that I arrived. We get to mass and we're there, and lo and behold, it's this scripture reading. So my cousin kind of, nudged, she looked at me, she kind of elbowed me, she said, listen, she goes, this gospel is just for you. And I realized like the Lord is reminding myself and reminding all of us that, that every sacrifice is meant to be a, a joyful sacrifice, as we heard in the first reading of the responsorial psalm. We're supposed to, again, we do things, again, with love and with joy, and there's happiness there, but there's also a bit of suffering as well. And when our Lord tells us, he says, look, I give you a hundredfold. And I've experienced that. Missionaries, priests, religious, we've all experienced that. Anyone, a lay person that's gone off to another country uh, has that experience, or even in the same country. When you go, you go to a parish, what happens? Well, you have many children, right? There's literally hundreds of children. When you just think about the schools that you're at, you have all of these families, right? They become your brothers and sisters. You have the elderly members of the community, our seniors, and they become our parents to us. So there is this great community that continues to extend, and not only from one place, but every parish that we go to, every country that we go to, it just extends the number of people that, be that belong to our family because we're part of the mystical body of Christ. So again, it's a great gift, but there's also persecutions. We know that there's a cost to discipleship. We know that to follow Jesus, right, at any point in history, there will always be difficulties. And why is that? So why do we still today in the 21st century, why do we still have this difficulty? Well, because Jesus, he who has loved himself, right, is not always understood. He himself was with his disciples. He was with them for those three years. They couldn't understand everything. It took the Pentecost, it took the Holy Spirit. And even then when the Holy Spirit comes upon them and within them, little by little they're able to understand what, what, Lord, what the Lord is asking for them, right? It takes a while. And they had many joys, many successes. Again, but there's always that suffering that's there. Why? Because Jesus said, look, the disciple is not greater than the master. So that means that in my life, no matter how faithful I am to God, and the more faithful I am, the more I will suffer in the sense that 
I'm loving everyone. I'm loving people, even those who perhaps may even hate me. Right? People may hate me. It was uh, the Archbishop uh, Fulton Sheen who said that most people hate right, things about the church that they misunderstand, their falsities. But if we allow the Lord to shine through us, and if we can radiate the love of Christ to our brothers and sisters, chances are, eventually, people are going to come and say, you know what, okay, I understand it. There's some truth to this, that this person who they proclaim to be God, who is Jesus Christ, he's worth following. But we have to, all of us have to go through this. And again, we do this with joy. You know, all of us, so I'm, I'm part of the ministerial priesthood, all of you at home, right? All of us have to enter the church through baptism, so you share in a common priesthood. To share in a common priesthood means that every single one of us is a priest, prophet, and a king. Every one of us has the capacity we can offer to God our lives. And we're meant to offer it again with a deep sense of joy. And the more we do that, the more we do that, again, the more peace that we experience in our own lives. And I can see that all the time. There was um, a few weeks ago, I uh, had the the blessing of being able to, to baptize a seven-year-old. So I baptized a seven-year-old boy. And so I'd kind of been helping him out for the past year and a half and, and to tell him about who Jesus is, you know, and he was very excited about learning about our Lord. And then he wanted to get baptized. So he was baptized. And as soon as I baptized him, again, it was great because he's also, he's not too small and he's not too big. So he went and he hugged every single person in the church that was there for his baptism. He was so overflowing with love and joy because he understood that he is a son of God. He's a beloved son of God. And he understood that in his own life, right, in that short life of seven years, that God was calling him to a life that was abundant, a life where th that had meaning, right, that his life was beyond video games or beyond the things that were around him. But Jesus was calling him, and I was kind of pointing to all the stained glass image, uh, the images around us and saying, look, do you see all those people up there, those men and women? They all loved the Lord. They all left everything to serve him. And you know what? They were even happier. See, when we try to hold on to anything, right, which is a very common experience, we want to hold on to the things that we believe we love. In the end, we actually don't have much Right? because we're so concerned about protecting what we have. And then our hearts get harder, and they get more constricted. But when we realize that we're loved by God and that he will always provide for everything that we need, what happens in the end? We are more free to be able to love. We're able to love indiscriminately, as Jesus says. Right? He says, my Father lets it rain on the good. He lets it rain on the bad. Right? So it's for him to decide who's good and bad, but it's for us to be able to emulate, again, what the Lord is calling us to, again, which is to love our brothers and sisters. And so there's persecution, but there's a great amount of joy. I think one of the things that's happened is that at times, at least historically, we focused on the difficulties and not enough about the joy of following Christ. So some people, some people will look at us and they'll say, it's always about a series of nuns, right? I can't do this. I can't do that, but it's beyond that. Even the vows that we take, right? As a priest, when we take, um, we make our promises to the bishop, right? Those are meant so that we can be freer, right? To do what God wants. So we don't put any barriers there. So we allow the Holy Spirit into our lives and to guide us as he will. And it works. It honestly works. It's a sacrifice, again, that, that gives glory to God. It leads other people to him. It brings joy. We can see it again in the, in the little boy that was just baptized. And it also can draw people, right? The for, it's the force of attraction. It's, that is what brings people. That was what uh, led me to the church. And that's what lead many people as well. So right now at home, you're thinking, okay, perhaps uh, the majority are, are not consecrated religious or day ministers or to the diaconate. So what do you do? Well, all of us, again, have a responsibility, this great privilege to be able to pray and to offer up our life as a sacrifice to God, right? One that has a beautiful fragrance. But also pray for, pray for the men and women throughout the world that are struggling. Pray for the missionaries that find themselves that are quite lonely, those that are being rejected in the places where they are. It happens very often. You know, as I, my experience in Mongolia was absolutely beautiful. Got to meet many, many people uh, that were wonderful people, strong people. But there was also 
at times misunderstanding, right? Because they saw us as we're coming from another country, so perhaps, you know, they were a bit suspicious. It's understandable, it's understandable. But it takes a lot of patience, it takes a lot of praying, and at times it, it uh, requires tears as well. And that they do not lose heart, but that they persevere in their vocation. And we ask God also as well, we continue to pray and we ask the Lord for more and more people to be able to have the strength and be able to have the capacity to say, look, if I feel that God is calling me to this, then I'm going to do it as well. I'm going to do it as well. But it's not meant to be. Again, it's the, the Christian life isn't just the cross. Of course, the cross is an integral part of that. But it, we worship a crucified and risen Lord. He's triumphed over death. He's triumphed over suffering. And therefore, if I unite myself to the Lord, even though I have to go through difficulties, I know, as Jesus tells us in the gospel, he says, look, he says, in the end, right, in the age to come, you will have eternal life. And that's always a good thing for us to think about. So I'm having a hard time in my life. Maybe I'm at home. I can't go anywhere. I'm struggling. Other people don't know what's going on in my life, but God does. Jesus knows what's going on in our life, and the Lord wants us to persevere, right? And he gives us everything we need. We need to surrender and trust. And I promise you, if you do that, you will experience the power of joy now and also eternal life in the world to come. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, a work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, powers tremble before you heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, O Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my life. The Lord will say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
life. Amen. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore in us mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. We gather.